Hey, good morning or good afternoon or whatever time that it is at your house right now or wherever you happen to be. But thank you very much for joining today. I'm Sam Edwards. I'm an Android and Kotlin Google developer expert. And I've been using the biometric prompt lately. And we mostly have uh, devices with fingerprints. However, this beautiful Pixel 4 came out this past October. And uh, it's a little bit different. It has face unlock. So if you're dealing with the Android biometric prompt, you probably know what it looks like with fingerprint. But do you know with face? So um, you really, if you want to test it, there's no emulator right now. So you're going to have to go out and drop some money to get one of these. So I figured since I've had to go ahead and get one, why don't I go ahead and show you what it looks like so potentially you don't have to. Because as a developer, you want to make sure that your experience when using the biometric prompt is good, but you can't really see what it looks like on a face unlock device. So since you maybe never seen one of these again uh, before, let's go ahead and just go into settings, go into security, and we're going to set up a face profile right now. So we're going to set up face unlock. I'll put in my non-secure pattern, read the instructions, and agree, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it here. I'm going to see my face, and I just turn it around. Move it up. Oops. I'm never good at this thing. There we go. <laughs> this is hard, obviously, but it finally gets a, I guess, a fingerprint of your face or whatever. Yay, we got it. All right, so now my face is set up for this phone. So I can go ahead and use it to unlock and lock things. So let's check out my, well, we can just check it out first. If I go ahead and lock the phone, go ahead and try to open it up. Um, I put it at not my face, I'm not going to do much of anything. I put it on my face, boom, it's unlocked. Yay, it works. But let's dive into biometric prompt now. Here's a sample app from our open source project, Biometrics. If you go ahead and launch the biometric prompt, you get this authenticate with face. And it actually went ahead and scanned my face already. So let's cancel, do it again. There it is, good to go. Now, if I cover up the screen this time, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up. Then it's gonna try to find my face and eventually it will not. So it gives me the option to try again, point out my face, there it is. So I can go ahead and confirm. One thing they just released in the latest patch, um, I just upgraded last night actually, is the fact that you can um, set it so your eyes have to be open. I'm not sure if that's default to be on or off at this point, but that is something that's there and um, been something that Google had some press about. So they've added that option in, which is really nice if you wanna make it so that you're not sleeping. Um, all right, continuing on. You saw what the flow looked like a little bit here, but let's see what it looks like side by side. So. Typically, you know, you'll see that, authenticate with the face and do a confirmation and you'll succeed. What's nice though is sitting here next to it, I have a wonderful Pixel 3 phone. So let's pull that up on here as well. Of course, I ended up disconnecting that. So we'll connect it now. There we go. So we have the Pixel 3 on the left and the Pixel 4 on the right. What we wanna go ahead now is launch the biometric prompt on both. So we'll do that. We have authenticate with fingerprint and authenticate with face. So we've already authenticated with face and it's asking me to confirm. On the uh, fingerprint side, I'm not confirming yet because I have not actually put my fingerprint on. I go ahead and do that. I confirm. On this one, I tap. I confirm. So that's a little bit different there, right? The confirmation is that you're actually hitting the confirm button on face. So it's that deliberate action. Now, if we go into the biometric prompt setup that I have right here, we can turn confirmation required to false. Now I'm going to Run that on both devices. Do that on the Pixel 4 and on the Pixel 3. And we'll get that to come up here. This is a really small sample app, so it's pretty quick. But I'm gonna go ahead and launch the biometric prompt on both now, launch and launch. So the one on the right is the face one, and you saw there, it never actually had a confirmation dialog. Try it one more time, and that's it. It just sees my happy face. On the left, it's still exactly the same. Go ahead and tap that, and there it is. All right, so now I wanna change some other configuration so you can see what it looks like. Right now, we're only specifying a title. I'm gonna go ahead and specify a subtitle as well. So I'm just gonna say subtitle, and then also some description text. All right, description. And this is a wrapper around the biometric prompt. All these fields are here, but it's nice in this little library to be able to do a name by you pair like we can do in Kotlin, name parameters. So I can go ahead and run this now on both of these, so Pixel 3, and then we'll do the Pixel 4 after that. And let's see what it looks like. Pop them both open, unlock, and 
base unlock. There it is. All right, so now I've got both of them. Let's launch on both. Launch, launch. And as you see there, it shows authenticate with fingerprint, subtitle, and description on the left on the Pixel 3. On the Pixel 4, it didn't do much of anything. It just passively authenticated me there. So that was really cool, actually. It's a really great experience to not have to do anything at all. You just see it and go. However, there's a lot of scenarios where you probably want to have the user confirm that that's what they want to do. So this is something um, that's really important as a developer to understand that if you set authentication required to false, then on the face unlock device, which right now is just a Pixel 4 that supports this biometric, biometric prompt face unlock, this is the behavior that you're going to get. So on the left, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to go back and tweak my code just a little bit again. I'm going to set confirmation required to true with all this text in here. So now we'll run this on the Pixel 4, and we already have it installed on the Pixel 3, which has confirmation already going to be there. So let's launch it on both, launch and launch. And now you see, it did go ahead and, and see my face on the right here in the face unlock version. I do have the confirm button, but I actually see all the information. So what I find or what I think of when I think of this as a developer, you basically wanna always have confirmation required as true if you wanna tell the user something. If it's something where you just want to fastest flow as possible and the user understands that's what's going to happen, then you want to go ahead and use confirmation required as false. Because if you had an application that went ahead and just, oops, turning my screens. Um, if you went ahead and had an application that just automatically logged you in, just like it does to unlock the phone, then that's a little weird. Um, if it's something where you'd never want an application to unlock you unless you confirm, there's actually a setting. We'll go into settings on this pixel. Four, go to face unlock. And it says down here, uh, always require confirmation. So if we turn that on and we go back and then we go back into our app and we turn this off, hit play in the Pixel 4. Let's check it out. So now it's launched it. I can go ahead and click on it. And you saw that we had confirmation required to false, right? Yeah, so we have that. So when, on the Pixel 4 though, it's still showing me the confirmation prompt. So realize too that your users have control. Anyone that has a Pixel 4 can force it to show all the information, but it is a really nice feature if you want somebody to really take advantage of face unlock and have something automatically unlock. Um, this was a quick overview, but I really just wanted to see the side by side, which you know well, which is the fingerprint biometric unlock as well as the face unlock. Now let's throw in one more thing just to make things fancy, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in the emulator. So let's launch one up here. Let's pop this open, here's our emulator. Put this all the way on the side. Now we have the Pixel 4 in the middle here, and we've got the Pixel 3 on the left. So the difference here is uh, Android 10 is running on both the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 4, and it looks like I moved the cable just enough so it came out. Pop that back on. And now we've got yeah, Pixel 3, Pixel 4, and our emulator running an API 27 image. So I'm going to launch in on all of these. Um, we've got fingerprint, we've got face, and we have authenticate with fingerprint. Now this is different, right? So on the very right side, the emulator looks different because it's using a version 27, which is before 28 when the Android biometric prompt was actually rolled into the system. So this is like a fallback dialogue. If you remember, every single application kind of had their own fingerprint dialogue that almost looks similar. So what the Android X library does that wraps this, it's gone ahead and provided this dialogue in there. So in devices that are less than 28, they're only gonna have fingerprint, really. Um, there are some devices that are exceptions, but for the majority, that's gonna be the case. And then we can go ahead and trigger that. So if I go into my emulator goodies here, I can trigger a fingerprint. And there we go. So I think that should give you some insight. That was a little bonus there on what it looks like pre-biometric um, prompt ages. But the Android X library gives you that, and it's really nice to have one API that you're working with. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you don't have to buy a Pixel 4 if you don't have to. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Take care.